So in this section, we're going to uh, talk about using this tool, synthetic division and long division, as tools to help us uh, do a couple things with polynomials. <clears throat> and one of the things I want to point out here is I have this function, blah, 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 and I could say when x equals 2. I also have this statement, that same function divided by x minus 2. And notice this 2 is what makes that a 0. There's a lot of similarities between uh, these two these two things. And so first off, let's do uh, let's just set this up for long division or synthetic division. So synthetic division would be what's the zero, right? What makes that thing we're dividing by a zero? And then let's just pull out the coefficients: six x to the fourth, negative one x cubed, negative fifteen x squared, two x, and negative seven. And then we would uh, work it on out. Uh, so f of x is equal to this when x is 2. So notice we could evaluate f of 2 and plug it into there, right? So I could just do that on my calculator. Um, and what's fortunate for us is we can just do it on our calculator. Like that hasn't always been a thing throughout history uh, for, for people to be able to do, just use their calculator. So I'm going to uh, plug it down there. I'm going to say uh, 2 gets put into x, so x equals 2. It's just a different way to do it. And I'm just going to put in the whole thing. So 6 times x to the fourth. And I evaluate that. And it says that that's 25. So this evaluates to 25. That actually tells me this is not a 0 of that function. In order to be a 0 for the function, that output would have to be 0. And that would correlate to an x-intercept. So I have a 0 if this, when I plug it in, the uh, the equation evaluates to zero. So let me do long division, uh, sorry, synthetic division over here and see uh, see what happens. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, um, add, 16, multiply, 32, add, 25. My remainder is 25. Wait a minute. <laughs> My remainder was 25. But when I evaluated it to, I also got 25. This is kind of crazy. Um, this is always true. Doing the synthetic division, this remainder is the same thing as if you had plugged 2 into it and just evaluated it. This is called the remainder theorem. So if, uh, if I do this, this number, that's the remainder, is the same as plugging it in and doing all that, taking it to high powers. At one point, this was a really fast way to evaluate things. Instead of having to take things to really high powers and do a bunch of multiplication, you can do the synthetic division and evaluate it that way. So when this ends up being a zero, when my remainder is zero, right, that means a couple things. That means this is a factor of that. It also means that this or this is a zero of it. So we are told that x plus 2 is a factor of this. And then we're asked to find them all. OK, well, if, if x plus 2 is a factor of that, that means negative 2 is a 0. So I'm going to do some synthetic division. So I'm going to go this polynomial divided by that. So 1x cubed, negative 6x squared, negative 1x is in 30. Let's see, bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. Oh, that's pretty. Multiply, add. Yep, that worked out. So notice what I did. I took this thing and I divided it by that. So in a sense, I factored it out in x plus 2. What I was left with then is x cubed divided by x. That means this first term is x squared. So 1x squared minus 8x plus 15. So there's one of my factors. And if I want to factor this entirely, now I can factor this quadratic. And uh, I know how to do that. Things that multiply to this add to this. Uh, negative 5 and negative 3. So this would factor to x minus 3 times x minus 5. That was supposed to be an x plus 2. So my factors of this are x plus 2, x minus 3, and x minus 5. And notice how synthetic division helped me, helped me get there. I could go a little step further with this as well. I could say then the zeros of this function right, when this thing is equal to 0, are what makes this a 0, negative 2, what makes this a 0, 3, what makes this a 0, 5. 
in other words, if I were to graph this, it would have x-intercepts here, here, and here. Finding all these zeros is what this, uh, this section is all about. And if, uh, if I think about this, notice my strategy was like, take out what I could, and then look at what's left and try and factor it again. And this was a quadratic, right? So I could factor it. Maybe I'd have to use quadratic formula for it. Maybe I'd have to uh, probably not complete the square. I'm probably either going to factor it or use quadratic formula for it. Um, so let's take a little peek, peek at something like, now if I wanted to find the zeros for that, the, the thing about the problem before was I was given some information. I was given one of the factors. But here, I don't have anything to go on. So, like, I could just start trying things. Maybe five, maybe eight, maybe seven. Now, that's really, uh, it's really a pain. Um, so there is a relationship here that helps us limit the number of possible, at least rational zeros. There could be, there could be like, complex ones or maybe irrational ones. But here's what we could do. Uh, we take the factors of this. I'll call this P and I'll call this Q. So the factors, P, divided by the factors of Q. If this has any rational zeros, they have to be of that form. It doesn't mean all of everything that's of this form is a rational zero, but if it has them, they have to be this form. In other words, like if I look at this one, well, factors of one are one, factors of two are one and two. So I could have uh, one over one, which is one, could have one over two, which is one half, and I could have positive and negative values of those two, right? Negative one, negative one half. There's really only four things I need to check here to see if they are zeros of this. There's no other possibilities. Now, why does this happen? Well, let's think about this. Let's just go back to this right here. Uh, two plus x plus 2, x minus 3, x minus 5. Notice those are my three factors. In other words, like we did division this way to get down to here. To get from here back up to here, we'd multiply. Notice where this 30 is coming from. Negative 5 times negative 3 times 1. Notice where this 1 comes from. 1x times 1x times 1x. You know, if I had something a little more complicated, like uh, 2x minus 3 times 5x minus 7, or let's say plus 7. And if I multiply it out, notice my first term is going to be 10x squared. My middle term is going to be some combination. And then my last term, negative 3 times 7, is negative 21. So notice that my first term, like these numbers that are in the front, make up that 10. These numbers that are in the back make up the, that negative 21. So factors of negative 21, 3 and 7, positive negative factors of 10, 5 and 2, uh, 1 and 10. So notice one of my answers is 3 over 2, right? Another of my answer is 7 over 5. So that's why this works. Uh, that's a great tool to help us limit our possibilities. Well, let's keep going from there with this problem then. So if we want to find all the zeros for this, we know we've got some possibilities. Well, okay. Let's go from there. I'll try negative 1 and see if it works. A 2x cubed, 1x squared, negative 4x's, and 1, 1. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. This is not going to work. Multiply, nope, not a 0. So negative 1 isn't 1. So how about I go and try 1? So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. This looks good. Uh, add, multiply, add. Yep. So that means I factored out an x minus 1. And what I got left with well, was a cubic divided by a linear. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then, you know, I could work to try and factor this um, to find other zeros, and I'm not going to find them that way. So I think I'm going to have to use quadratic formula to, uh, to find them. Do that. So one of my zeros is 1, right? And I got that from here. 
So now I get my other zeros from here. So I'm going to use quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Square root of 9, negative 4 times 2 times negative 1 is positive 8. So it looks like I've got these other two zeros, and there they are right there. Notice these are irrational. Negative 3 plus or minus square root of 17, they're irrational. They're, they still are actual x-intercepts. They're, they're zeros and they're x-intercepts. It's just they don't, they're not in spots that can be rewritten just like as a fraction without a square root in them. Let me pull up Desmos here and see, uh, see, what, I, see what I got. Uh, I'll graph the original equation, which was so there's, notice there's my nice, neat one, positive one. I've got this decimal and this decimal. This is going to be the one where you're adding root 17. This is going to be one you're subtracting uh, root 17. So it still gave me those, those zeros, and all those zeros are all x-intercepts. So that worked nicely. Um, okay, so I have this great tool that I can use where I look at factors of the last term over factors of the first term. So let's say factors of last, and it's really the coefficient over factors of the. So if I had something like, and I just wanted to know what the possible rational zeros were, I would say, let's see, factors of negative 4 are plus or minus 1, 2, and 4. Uh, factors of 2 are plus or minus 1 and 2. So. Factors of the last over factors of the first. So the possible zeros, again, these are not guaranteed zeros. These are just the possibilities. 1 over 1, so plus or minus 1. Uh, 1 over 2, so plus or minus 1 half. 2 over 1, plus or minus 2. 2 over 2 is 1. We've already got that one. Uh, 4 over 1, so plus or minus 4. 4 over 2 is 2. We've already got that one. So eight possibilities. So I would just plug away at them and see, see which ones works. Just use my synthetic division. Uh, this one's, ah, never mind. It's kind of a tricky one. All right, so let's take a look at both of these. Um, and we want to find zeros for them. So looking at this one, uh, let's see. So factors of 1 are plus or minus 1. Factors of 4, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. So my possible zeros are plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 1 over 2, uh, plus or minus 1 over 4. Okay, so I've got a lot of possibilities here. So let's see what we can do. Well, let's try and take a 1. Let's try and take a 1 out of there and see, see what we got. So I've got 4x cubed. Oh, I don't have any x squared. I need my placeholder. I got a negative 3x and a negative 1. So let's see. Bring it down. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Oh, this is good. Add. Multiply. Add. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so it looks like we uh, factored out an x minus 1. And what we're left with is 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, and then I could try and factor this or maybe run it through quadratic formula. Those are both possibilities. I think this factors to uh, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1, which means I have x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 squared. Oh, interesting. So this gives me a 1. And this gives me a repeated root, like that negative one half, half happens twice. So that has a multiplicity of two. Well, you remember what happens at that graph with the multiplicity of two is it looks like a, a little tiny parabola at that spot at that zero. Let me grab Desmos back over here and put that, put that equation into here. So there's my zero at one. And here's my repeated, right, multiplicity of 2 at 1 half. So there we go. I've got all the zeros for that one. Go back and do this one then. 
So plus or minus one, plus or minus one. So my only zeros, my rational zeros, possible ones are plus or minus one. I should have three of them, right? According to that. So let's grab one and see what happens. Uh, so I've got one X cubed, three X squared, three X's and a one. You know, and I gotta say, just by looking at it right now, it doesn't look hopeful for the positive one because I'm just gonna keep adding here, right? Everything's positive, bring it down multiply, um, add, multiply, add. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. One's not going to work. Let's try negative one. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. Ooh, that looks good. Add, multiply. Yeah. Gives us a zero. Great. So that worked. So what we did is we factored out uh, an x plus 1, right, because the 0 is negative 1. We got left with an x squared plus 2x plus 1. Maybe quadratic formula, maybe um, factoring, which, yeah, which I can do. That's an x plus 1 again. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. It's x plus 1 cubed. Uh, so that graph, then, We'll have a little cubic at negative one. So if negative one's right here, right, it's repeated root. It happens three times, so it looks like a little cube root because it actually, is. I mean, a little cube right there. Take a peek at these then. So I want to find all the zeros for this. So I'm thinking about possibilities. Factors of this it would be plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus one, plus or minus three. So one over one, a possible zero is plus or minus one, three over one, plus or minus three, and then um, three over three, one over three. Oh, I could have one thirds as well, right? Plus or minus one third. So a couple different possibilities. I try stuff, it, it might work, it might not work. Um, I, th I think I know it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna try negative three. And if it didn't work, I'll go back and try another one. Let those coefficients, 3x cubed, 9x squared, 1x, 3. And go, bring it down, multiply, add, and look at this mistake I made. That should be a 1, that's a 1x. Multiply, add, multiply, add. Yep. So notice what I did. I factored out an x minus 3. And I was left with a 3x squared plus 0x plus 1. So one of my zeros is negative 3. And this other one, 3x squared plus 1, I'm going to get 2 out of there as well. And uh, what's kind of crazy about this, I'm not going to be able to factor it. I could use quadratic formula on it uh, if I really wanted to, but I don't think I want to. I think that what I'll do is just solve it. 3x squared plus 1 equals 0. Since that, that b term is 0, this is pretty easy to solve. Subtract one from both sides, divide by three, and then now what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll square root both sides. So I got plus or minus square root of negative one third. Wow, we look at that. That is the same as plus or minus. Well, square root um, square root of one is i. Uh, uh, square root of negative one is i. Square root of one is one. 1 over square root of 3, which I should clean up to, uh, you know, how to rationalize the numerator and denominator. Notice I've got these imaginary zeros, root 3 over 3i and negative root 3 over 3i. I've still got three of them, right, because my original thing was a cubic, but I've got these imaginary ones. So if I think about uh, graphically what that means, grab Desmos again. Let's see, that was, uh, was this. So look, there's my real one and my imaginary ones. They are zeros, but they're not x-intercepts, right? These are values. If I plug that like root 3 over 3i into here, it will evaluate to zero. But there are no imaginary numbers on this graph. Like this is all real numbers. So there are no, they don't correlate to x-intercepts but they are still zeros. So we can have imaginary zeros. Uh, graphically, it just means they're not x-intercepts. 
All right, let's give this one here a go. So plus or minus one, two, and four, plus or minus one and two. So my possible zeros are one over one. These are all plus or minus, right? One over two, two over one, two over two is one, four over one, four over two, all those possibilities. Okay, uh, let's try two. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Two doesn't work. Okay. Let's try negative two. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. This isn't going to work. Negative 13, that's not going to be a four. That doesn't work. Okay, let's try four then. Bring it down, multiply. 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Uh, this isn't going to work. Multiply 40, 52. It's that might get to 4. Let's try negative 4. Sometimes you just got to tough it out and see what happens. Bring it down, multiply, um, add, multiply. Ooh, this looks good. Positive 1, multiply, add. Great. So we factored out an x plus 4. These zeros. One of them was negative 4. And what we got left with was uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And now we could use um, maybe factoring, maybe quadratic formula. Oh, I think I can factor that. I think it's uh, 2x minus 1 and x minus 1, which is great because one half was a possibility and one was a possibility. Yeah. So notice this gives me a 0 of 1. This one, set it equal to zero and solve it, right? 2x minus 1 equals zero, you get positive 1 half. And there's my zeros. Now, here's what I want you to notice. Um, if I know the zeros, I could write a polynomial that matches it as well. It's just like everything in reverse, right? If these are my zeros, negative 4, well, that would have come from this factor. 1, this would have come from that factor, and so on. Um, and then I can multiply them out to get that. So for example... If I had something told that my zeros are um, negative 3, 2, and 1, what, what's a possible polynomial that it could, could have come from? Well, x plus 3 would be one of the factors. x minus 2 would be one of the factors. x minus 1 would be one of the factors. Do some multiplication. So this times this would be x squared, 3x minus 2x is plus x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then that would get multiplied by x minus 1. So distribute that x to all those. x cubed plus x squared minus 6x. Distribute the negative 1 to all those. Negative x squared, negative x, positive 6. Add everything together. x cubed, x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 6x minus x is negative 7x. And then plus 6. So this polynomial would have those zeros. And just, just to note, like there could be a multiplier out here. There could be like a 7 out here or a, or a 12 out here or anything. That doesn't change the zeros. It just stretches it up and down. But the zeros, they're also called roots, right? It still goes through those zeros. So this could be like everything multiplied by some value. You wouldn't have to write this, but officially it would be ax cubed minus 7ax plus 6a, which would be like a could be any number. Any of those, uh, any of those would work. So I do want to talk about something that's called Descartes' uh, rule of sign changes. It just gives you some information about possible number of uh, positive or negative rational zeros. So um, what you do is you look at f of x and you look at f of negative x. So f of x is going to give you some information about the possible uh, number of positive zeros. And what we're looking for is sign changes in the terms. So notice uh, positive, 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 positive. This has one sign change in it. So one sign change. And I'll come back and talk about what that means in a sec. Uh, now if I go f of negative x, if I plug a negative x into here, well, a negative number taken to an even power will always be positive. So the even powers won't change. 
I should say the sign of the even powers won't change, but the sign of the, anything with an odd power in it will change. All right, so same, different, same. And notice here there's one, two, three sign changes. Now, what this number tells me is there's either that many or an even number less than. So there's going to be one positive zero for this polynomial. Negative zeros, there could be three or there could be one. And these are rational zeros, right? So if, if there were seven sign changes, there could be seven of them, five of them, three of them, two of them. It always goes down by, uh, by, by two. All right, uh, that is Descartes' um, rule of signs for checking things out. Um, one other thing I want to note, and this is kind of interesting, you know, like when we were looking for zeros and we ended up with a quadratic, and then we did we did that work. Put that back. We end up with a quadratic, and then in some cases we use the quadratic formula to get the answers. And when we did that, we ended up with irrational ones. Remember the quadratic formula has that plus or minus, b plus or minus square root of some stuff all over two sign to some number. Quadratic formula will always spit out two answers. And if the thing that's inside the square root, let's say it ends up being a negative number, right? Negative something, we'll just call it negative a. So I've got some number, plus or minus, negative, blah, some number. Notice that it'll be like, uh, I'll put some actual numbers in here. 5 plus or minus um, square root of negative 16 over 2. So I've got 5 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is 5 halves plus or minus 2i. Here's what I want you to notice. Like, if this ends up being i, you will always have like something and what looks like it's it's not it's mirror but like it's partner it always be in the form this plus or minus that right this plus that and this minus that these are called conjugate pairs so uh, these conjugates if you have an answer one of your zeros is a plus bi its conjugate a minus bi has has to always also be a zero so imaginary zeros come in conjugate pairs. All right. Hey, give these problems a try. Message me with questions. Put stuff in the forum. Do the practice.